Well, everyone and welcome back to another video now i know it's been a while since my last video I've just been busy selling a house work all of that stuff so yeah um sorry for uh yeah making a late video but this one is pretty cool uh it's been i've also been trying to find a some good stuff to cover and it wasn't until um like last night and stuff when i was uh, at a bar talking with some friends uh who have started to play around with um, the Cloudflare and Zero Trust that I thought, man, this is awesome. Um, and I've covered stuff like proxy managers and like tunnels and stuff before. And I thought, hey, let's cover Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare Zero Trust. So uh, I'm not gonna muck around and we'll just jump straight into it. And I'll start talking about uh, what I'm using it for. Um, and there's a lot of other things you can be using it for, but just kind of uh, setting up tunnels and a uh, accessing applications hosted on like Docker or on a Raspberry Pi. Um, from anywhere and putting single sign-on on the front. So uh, let me just show you how I have mine set up. Okay, so this is Cloudflare Zero Trust, okay? And the crazy thing about this is it's free, okay? And you can do some amazing cool stuff with it and it's it's surprisingly easy to set up. So the, the way this works, right, is that what we have is that we, we have a tunnel, right? And these tunnels, a pretty much so let me just show you i'll configure it um it's just a host name and where does it map onto your local machine right and I'll, I'll explain how that works in a second but let's just say i'm hosting cockpit right on 1990 and i've given it a public host name hey look you can access this uh host um cockpit via cockpit.techdocs.nz uh, and hey this on the local machine you can access it on port 1990 okay and now this is running in uh, a docker container and if i go and and the way this works and the way you can have this authentication work between cloudflare and your local machine that you're running it on is that you actually can set it up in a few ways uh, you can set it up in, in a docker image and it'll give you kind of like a, a script to run right um red hat it will give you the install instructions debian mac windows and all of that right and the way this works is i'll bring up my terminal so here is a docker container running on my uh raspberry pi at the moment and it's just a docker container that running that script has authenticated me with cloudflare and on my raspberry pi okay i haven't had to do any port forwarding i haven't had to do anything like this i literally just run this docker container that authenticates with cloudflare it sets up a tunnel Right, so let me just leave. Which you can see is a healthy connection. It's made that authentication method between my Raspberry Pi and Cloudflare. And then I'm telling Cloudflare within the tunnel when I can configure it. Hey, on my local machine, you can see it on, on my local machine. I want to hit port 9090 using this public domain name. And I, I can literally click it. And it takes me to a single sign-on page all managed by Cloudflare, where I can authenticate with either GitHub or a one-time password. If I click GitHub, it's going to take me, I think I've already signed in, so I might already be authenticated. And it authenticates me, and I've got my cockpit, right? And now I, I can just log in with my um, on-prem credentials, uh, as in my credentials for my Raspberry Pi, and now I'm in cockpit, right? And now if I want to add something else, um, so we've got just the, 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 um, the two here, but I could install something else on my Raspberry Pi, map that port with a domain name and I can connect to it. And again, you can then add SSO on top of it, uh, via just adding, um, a creating an application. And the way this works is that when you add an application, you can choose a whole bunch of ones where it lives and stuff like that. And you can go, ah, I have a self-hosted application um, and the application name, you can give it a name and you just tell it the domain name that that application is on. And I've mapped it to cockpit, which is the other one that I have. And then I can say, hey, look, anything with this application, you can set a, um, an access group on, which is how you say, hey, look, allow github or an email or whatever to be able to single sign on um and it's honestly it's it's crazy easy so let me kind of just walk you through the steps of setting uh, another tunnel up with like a another container that i'm going to spin up so let's just try uh find a container that i want to use right i want grafana 
So let's grab um, Grafana, okay? And I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab this, and it's going to run on port 3000. So we have to remember this, okay? It's going to run on port 3000. So we come here, paste that in. It's going to fail because I didn't put sudo. So let me just cancel that. I haven't added my user group to the Docker uh, group. It's going to set it up, all right? It's going to download the image and do its thing. And there we go. So now it's running. So let's check it locally, right? Let's go 192.240, uh, and it's running on port 3000, right? And I can't reach it. Great. I think it takes a while for Grafana to initially stand up. So let's just wait. There we go. Okay. So now it's it's stood up, right? And now, okay, I want to access this online. I want to, if I'm away somewhere and I want to be able to access Grafana, um, not on my home network, and I, you know, don't want to set up proxy manager. I don't want to set up all these VPN crap. How do I do it? Right. Okay. Let's go here. We're going to come here and configure our existing setup tunnel. Public host name. Add a public host name. And we'll call this uh, subdomain uh, Grafana. It's on the tech docs. And we're going to connect over HTTP 192.168. Oh, actually, no, sorry. We'll do localhost. And I can do localhost because um, we've got this, uh, I've got my Docker container mapped on the network uh, of host. So it just talks to it fine. So I can have my container um, and I can use localhost uh, to call the Grafana uh, container. That's why I can do that. So we'll save that. So now we've made that connection. So we've got, we're saying, hey, look, please access this host on port 3000. Um, for, and that will be Grafana. But we want single sign on and stuff on this as well. So we can come into applications and we'll add a new application. This is uh, it's a self hosted one. And we'll call it Grafana. And so anything with this domain, which is Grafana. And we're going to use. Um, the identity providers that I've set up in my settings, which is just uh, GitHub or one time pin. We'll hit next. Policy name, we'll call that Gra uh, Grafana Policy. And we'll allow it. And I've got already set up an uh, access group, which is just called TechDocs. So I'm going to hit next. We're going to leave these by default. Add application. And now Grafana is there. So we've got it local, right? And now we want to go Grafana. Dot uh, I don't know if it works on Brave. Let's just see. I might have to go to Safari for this to work. Yeah, okay. Let's just open up Safari. I just have issues with um, Brave sometimes. So let's do grafana.tdocs.nz. There it is. Hit enter. Hit single sign-on at the top. You see the domain. And now I was already authenticated because it, um, it worked before, right? Um, where I was already authenticated for cockpit and it's authenticated and now it's letting me hit the application. Done. That's how I just set up another thing running on my Raspberry Pi, another application. And you just do that as many times as you want. If you have a new host on your machine, just set up a new tunnel for that one with its domain name and map it to that. And you just continue on. So I just set up single sign on for specific applications via tunnels. Um, and I can just hit it just, just like that. So yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, what I might do is I'll just have to show you one other thing. I will switch my camera because my camera is currently using on my iPhone. I'm going to switch it to my Mac camera and I'll show you accessing this via the internet, not on my wireless, um, and hitting these over the internet. So let's just do that. Okay. So let me, let me show you this. Uh, let me just take my eh phone off and you can see it's, a. Uh, it's all legit. It's all live. <laughs> I've just I've literally just taken my phone off now. Um, so let's try. I'm just going to type it in before I fully before I press enter. I'll show you. So uh, can you see this? So at the bottom, grafana.techdocs.nz. I'm going to hit go. Bam! Now it's asking me for my um, my single sign on, right? And we'll hit GitHub. Ugh. And it's not letting me do it because that's a good question. I don't know why it's not letting me do it. Let's have a look. I don't know what I've done. So let's just see what happens. Okay. I don't know what was happening there. I just had to remove the um, authentication method of um, this uh, one time pass and then that worked. So you can see at the bottom it says grafana.techdocs.nz. 
I'm on I'm on 4G. You can see it out there. I haven't set up any VPNs or anything like that. And it's all set up. And we can try cockpit as well. So cockpit. Uh, so you can see. Uh, can you see that? Cockpit. My mic also might be sounding a bit weird. I'm not talking directly into it. But there it is. And we'll hit go. Oops. And hit go. And there we go. I hit it. So just like that, um, I set up my applications to be able to be accessed over the internet. So yeah, uh, if you like um, Cloudflare and you like the look of this, have a, have a go. Um, I can make a more detailed video on it if you want it, but I think this should be fine, right? Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.